Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody for being here this morning. Um, a little tough to get out of bed with a rainy day. Um, thank you to the Red Hook and Rhinebeck Chamber of Commerce for um, coming in. And um, for a gentleman who needs no introduction, I'm gonna, he's, no, he's not going to get one. I'm going to allow you to come over, and uh, we're just going to start the program. Works for me. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I do have to uh, love that. I, I appreciate it uh, when I speak in Red Hook. Uh, well, actually, the, I'll do this. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm lucky enough even to be invited to speak in Red Hook or Rhinebeck. Having uh, had uh, uh, spoken in this uh, community for 20 years, I'm surprised people want to listen to me any longer. But uh, I appreciate it. Uh, they'll get it one way or another. Okay, James, we're good? Uh, I want to uh, thank you uh, for uh, allowing me to, uh, uh, to do this uh, with you. You're actually the uh, first of our budget presentations on the road, and this is somewhat uniquely different than uh, maybe has happened uh, in the past. Uh, uh, over the course of uh, the last 10 months, uh, uh, we have attempted as a county government to not only assemble this budget, but to include the important uh, and priority stakeholders across Dutchess County in the development of this budget. So to some of you, what, I, what I'm going to be talking about might be news, but to others of you, you will have heard it uh, a dozen times. I know that Ben Trout, county legislator from Red Hook, is here. He could probably give this presentation. He's heard it so many times. Um, but, but for us, the establishment uh, of a budget is uh, so much more than just setting uh, appropriations and revenues. It's piecing together in many ways the components of a government in a way that reflect uh, our principles and meet the expectations of those we serve. Uh, the 2013 tentative budget addresses current fiscal and economic realities while setting in motion a multi-year transformation of county government. We seek to reform and improve service delivery by carefully analyzing all that we do and find ways to do it better. While this has been and remains an ongoing process to achieve our goal we as a government must think and act differently than we have before. Uh, President Ronald Reagan said, the status quo is Latin for the mess we're in. <laughs> the dictionary defines it as the existing state or condition. In either case, we find ourselves dissatisfied with the status quo, continued economic strife resulting in far <clears throat> too many unemployed and even more underemployed seems insurmountable. Our businesses struggle, farmers work harder, families confront new challenges, and government at every level in New York State is, in many ways, outmoded, outdated, and overwhelmed by the complexities of the day. I think the public expects government to work together. At all levels of government, partisanship, point scoring, and personal attacks have poisoned the public discourse. Everyone must understand sacrifice is necessary and accept that we are all in this together. Together we seek new opportunity and demand improvements in the way in which government functions. Today, we work to create a stronger economy for our residents, employees, small businesses, and farmers. We want a better quality of life, clearer sense of place, and improved character of community for those who live, work, and raise their families here. Now, what we're going to present to, to you today, I think, defines the future of our county. It helps to invigorate and inspire the best in us, and without doubt or hesitation, by working together, I think, uh, Dutchess County and Dutchess County government reinvents itself. Now, with all of this in mind, I'd like to walk you through our 2013 tentative budget. Now, as you know, uh, I've been county executive since uh, January, uh, and uh, the uh, Poughkeepsie Journal last year said uh, when, when I was elected that Dutchess County residents should expect big things. Well, over the course of the last uh, 10 months, uh, we have uh, spent a great deal of time analyzing county government. And where would you start in the development of a budget uh, uh, other than in the county executive's office? But in so doing, uh, we have focused our attention uh, really on uh, communication, outreach, and discussion. Now, the development of this budget is, is unique, and the conversation and cooperation that we've engaged in is, in many ways, unprece unprecedented, and the cooperation has been gratifying. What do I mean by this? Well, we began the process uh, by bringing in both parties of the county legislature, leadership on both sides of the aisle, and said, this is the challenge we need to confront. How will we do this together? Uh, we've outlined many of the themes of the budget. We talked to the legislature to get their input, their ideas. Uh, but of, of equal importance, uh, we, we did a lot of outreach uh, to um, uh, the supervisors and mayors of Dutchess County, the not-for-profit agencies, uh, and others trying to pull together uh, all of the important stakeholders uh, to address what is our challenge. Now, what is our challenge? Uh, the fiscal environment that we live in is of significant uh, uh, difficulty. Uh, when we started uh, the year in January, Dutchess County government faced a projected $40 million 
budget gap. Now that initial projection was based on historical gaps coupled with known fiscal exposures including rising state pensions and health insurance costs, continuing state mandates, which represent about 75 percent of the county budget imposed on us uh, by New York State or Albany. And the, uh, and the expiration of the federal uh, financial assistance, the stimulus package. At the same time, Dutchess County's local economy continues to be challenged. Unemployment remains high at a year-to-date average of just over 8% compared to 2007, uh, and that annual average of about 4% unemployment. Unemployment and underemployment have a direct impact on the demand for services, as we see in the Department of Social Services, where caseloads continue to increase up 67% since 2007, from 28,000 to more than 47,000 individual service. The county's uh, tax base continues to decline 20% uh, or $7.7 .7 billion since 2008, from $38.4 billion to $30.7 billion. As a result of a downturn in the residential and commercial construction market, overall decline in home values as well as the reassessment activity over the past five years at the municipal level. This is a, this is a trend uh, that obviously we, we hope to stem uh, and, and overcome. Now in many ways the construction of a budget is like putting together a puzzle. Now I said to the county legislature, I, I don't like puzzles, puzzles. In fact I've never liked puzzles. My grandmother was really good at puzzles. My eight-year-old daughter is really good at puzzles. I'm better at developing a budget. But nevertheless, uh, uh, in many ways constructing this budget was like pulling together a puzzle. And now when you when you put the puzzle together, you don't do it indep independently. In many ways, you know, you bring people together to do it, right? Uh, or you put down a piece and the, an hour later your husband puts down a piece and then you come back and fix it because he put it in the wrong place, that kind of thing. <clears throat> For us, though, uh, we, uh, we assembled this budget like you assemble a puzzle. Now, the difference, of course, is with a puzzle you get a box with a picture on it and you know what, your, what the outcomes. Well, we didn't have a picture to start from, so we had to create that picture. And what did we do? We, we developed a, an online budget survey. 2,200 individuals responded to that budget survey asking questions, what are the priorities to you? We met with the municipal leaders, town supervisors, village mayors, city mayors, uh, asking them, what are your priorities? And, and telling them, we have to sacrifice together. And overall, we need to confront the status quo. We met with the not-for-profit community, saying to our partners in service delivery, we need to be, the, be in this together. How can we improve the way in which we deliver service? How can we ring out efficiencies? How can we do better? We met with the countywide elected officials, meeting quarterly. First time, as far as we know, in over 20 years. All of the countywide elected officials meeting quarterly, talk about priorities, talk about the issues important to us, develop the picture. And ultimately, and as I mentioned, uh, we meet regularly with the legislative leadership, both sides of the political aisle, uh, bringing them together. And little by little, we piece together what is ultimately uh, this budget and this puzzle. Now this particular budget, the 2013 tentative budget for us, begins to reset expectations. Government cannot be all things to all people. And county government cannot afford to be as big uh, as it is today. So we reset expectations by saying there are core responsibilities that county government ought to focus on and we ought to be the best in addressing those. Uh, this budget attempts for us to, sta uh, to stabilize our economic and fiscal foundation and and this will be an overused term that you will hear from me for the next year and a half, perhaps even for the next four years. Uh, it initiates a multi-year transformation of county government. And, in, and for us, year one is 2013. Now moving forward, uh, we establish that foundation and the decisions that we have made and the ideas that are in, uh, in, involved in this particular budget, included in this budget, begin for us that multi-year transformation and ultimately uh, begin a multi-year budgeting uh, process. We could we do not want to fall victim to the decisions that Albany and Washington often make, which is to have sort of a one-shot budget arrangement or a, a one-time revenue stream or uh, some quick fix. This is not that. We had a $40 million budget gap to overcome, and we did it and, and will do it uh, through a multi-year effort beginning in 2013. The goal was to strike balance. And where do you start in the development of a, of a budget, especially with a new county executive? Where would you start other than the county executive's office? And we began to look at what we do and what's our priority. Now, for me, I will tell you, our priority is communication, both getting information to you and getting information from you. I don't think you can make difficult choices uh, by excluding the public. And I don't think that you can make difficult decisions by isolating yourself uh, in the sixth floor of the county office building. So we wanted to restructure the way in which the county executive's office functions. Now there are two components of that office, the county executive's office and the small staff that works there, and the budget office, which is uh, four people. Did I get that right? <clears throat> four people. Uh, we have the smallest uh, combined executive office staff of any county in the region. Happy to say that, but it, it, it obviously places a lot of burden and challenge on the people who work there. Our focus is on <clears throat> analysis. Let's 
uh, understand the challenge, bring the stakeholders together and confront it, uh, and communicate. Again, both getting information to us and getting information uh, out of us. This is a strong team, uh, but it's uh, obviously limited uh, in, in staff numbers. So we began uh, there. We, we also uh, applied, and you have a few of these on your, on your tables, we also sought to apply basic decision-making principles, focus, logic, inclusion, and fairness. Why? Because my goal has been to depoliticize decision-making. And the only way that I can think to make sure the public understands that we really mean it is to force feed this uh, to department heads, to elected officials, and to the public. We want to make, the, we want to make every decision every decision within the context of these decision-making principles without pretense or prejudice to, ene uh, to enable economic growth and economic benefit and an overall enhanced quality of life. And you'll see these uh, ingrained in the, in the budget that we've presented to the legislature. At the core, again, economic growth. How do we stem that tide and get, uh, and get economic development uh, working here in Dutchess County again? How do we stem the tide of the economic uh, stagnancy? How do we see that assessed valuation continue to grow instead of uh, shrink? And overall, though, making those decisions in the context of how do we improve the overall quality of life. So we begin, though, uh, with the assemblage of this budget at the corners, which, of course, I've been told is not where you start, Buzzle, but, but for my sake, this works out pretty well. Uh, we start at the corners, and what are they? For us, consolidation and reorganization. I happen to think that government needs to change, that this, con this concept of preserving the status quo because it is the way we have done things isn't going to work in the future. Government needs to be more agile, and it needs, to be re it needs to be able to not only react, but be in a proactive state uh, to stay ahead of challenges. <clears throat> and in many ways, this government needs to consolidate and reorganize itself. So what do we do? We have a, a few components. Uh, the Department of Savvy. Make sure I have that right. Department of Savvy, Veterans, Youth, uh, serv uh, veterans, youth and Senior Services. Uh, this was a consolidation of several departments several years ago. The legislature initiated we are further consolidating uh, this department. The commissioner of that department had been the, in essence, the third assistant to the county executive. Wonderful woman, Betsy Brockway, served a number of years, uh, retired before I began uh, my tenure. We have decided to further consolidate this department uh, in uh, moving uh, veterans into the Department of Health, moving youth uh, services into the Department of Social Services, which we are renaming because it's uh, more focused on community and family development. We're, we're renaming it the Department of Community and Family Services. And then the Senior Services Division, which no one remembers as Senior Services, we are returning to the Office for the Aging as a standalone uh, department. Why? Well, we have a, an increasingly uh, older community, so there are big demands on seniors, and OFA receives uh, state and federal uh, revenue and assistance. So standing alone to be able to access those dollars benefits all of us. Not to mention, nobody knows it as senior services. We all have all, we, we even slip and call it Office for the Aging, so we're calling it Office for the Aging again. That's consolidation number one, saving $132,000 uh, in county government. Additionally, uh, the state of New York has uh, altered the way in which uh, it provides uh, assistance for uh, the Office of the Public Defender. Why is this important? Well, there's this little section in the Constitution that talks about a guaranteed uh, right of representation uh, for those uh, who can't afford private representation otherwise. So they established, uh, the state did a new uh, funding formula. Rather than a, a direct aid, here's $411,000, uh, you use it as you wish, uh, cr they've created a block grant. We need to use it or lose it. So for us, we began uh, uh, to address the state's desire to see uh, a greater uh, level of accountability uh, when it comes to indigent legal services. We begin to address this by expanding uh, the public defender uh, into the family court, uh, ultimately uh, saving uh, uh, Dutchess County about 540000 in assigned council costs. And then additionally, we are uh, engaged in a relationship with Ulster County where we hope to create an intermunicipal agreement to provide event, uh, conflict defense. They, 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 they'll uh, handle co uh, conflict cases for us. We handle conflict cases for them in the area of the criminal court. Overall savings in that, in that particular regard, 125000 Estimated total savings in the way in which we've reassembled the public defender's office uh, of uh, $666,000 to Dutchess County taxpayers. Now, uh, Dutchess County has two... Uh, div divisions of county government that sort of focus on the infrastructure of government. Uh, Office of Computer Information Services and the Central Services uh, uh, Division. Uh, in both cases, uh, their focus is to address uh, internal workflow and productivity and to coordinate externally with municipalities uh, and others. So for us, we want to bring them together. We're consolidating the OCIS and Central Services Division into a single new OCIS, the Office of Central and Information Services, where we can enhance that internal workflow 
uh, and work uh, to expand what we provide municipalities. Already a number of towns and villages are buying new services. A number of our not-for-profits are buying gasoline from us, using central services for us. And ultimately, uh, our goal is to continue to expand the ability of this department to enhance workflow within county government using technology to do so and best practices, but also to work with uh, municipalities uh, to provide them an opportunity to reduce their costs. Our focus, reduce the total cost of government. I don't know if you care who's taking the money out of your pocket. You just know that government's taking the money out of your pocket. So our goal is drive down the cost of government. Overcome the $40 million budget gap at the county level, but also drive down cost overall. Our goal, provide new resources and assistance to towns, villages, and cities so that they can centralize some of their service within us and we provide savings. Estimated savings in this area, $300,000. Now, we begin this year a massive restructuring of the Department of Public Works, uh, consolidating accounting functions, investing in uh, technology to expand savings, uh, and specifically merging the Highway and Engineering Division, which sort of acted in silos. They should be working together. Our focus uh, is, that they, uh, is to bring those two divisions together uh, because they share in responsibility in the design, construction, and maintenance uh, of Dutchess County's 395 miles of roads and 140 bridges and 178 drainage uh, structures, and I've counted all of them. I've been to every drainage cult now. Uh, additionally, within the Department of Public Works, uh, we're focused on reevaluating and evaluating the administration of the Dutchess County Airport. It should be an economic benefit to Dutchess County. Right now, we subsidize the Dutchess County Airport. We want to change the way in which it, uh, in which it functions. So uh, thanks to uh, some savings that we were able to achieve uh, uh, because of uh, a position vacancy within the department, we're bringing in a third party uh, professional uh, uh, to evaluate a management structure at the airport and hopefully identify for us a new uh, management model for the Dutchess uh, County Airport. Uh, it's really weigh the benefits of uh, public county management with a private management structure. Again, uh, the goal uh, here is to maximize the economic benefit to Dutchess County. The Department of Public Works restructuring is in itself very clearly year one of a multi-year uh, effort. This is for us uh, our definition of right sizing. Uh, the Department of Public Works is one of the largest, has the largest responsibilities, uh, and it, start, it moved from sort of this uh, focus on repair of roads, bridges, and culvert pipes, and now it's a full-service construction company. We want to get out of the business of being, a biz of, of being in the way of business. We want us to scale back, focus on those things that we do best, and then work with the private sector and municipalities to provide those services that they would provide more cost-effectively uh, to us. It's sort of a uh, a, per a perfect example of mission creep. We just got too big. It's time to get smaller again, right size uh, the Department of Public Works. This is year one. Additionally, we take the auto center, which was once in central services. No idea why. Uh, but in the Department of Public Works, we have mechanics. I don't know if you know this. And we have a fleet of vehicles. They're not the ones, however, that we're maintaining the cars that Dutchess County, the fleet of cars that Dutchess County is. We take the auto center out of central services. We move it to the Public Works Department in year one. This consolidation and reorganization saves Dutchess County taxpayers nearly one and a half million dollars, year one of, of many. Over the course of the next three years, 15% reduction, uh, the goal, 15% reduction in the Department of Public Works, both size uh, and cost to taxpayers. The total impact of our consolidation and reorganizational efforts, a savings of over $2.5 uh, million. Doesn't get us all the way there. Moving along. There are certain issues that have uh, confronted this county for a number of years that I believe have, have met and, and hit sort of critical mass that need to be addressed and can no longer be uh, ignored. Uh, and in some ways, the next few that I'm going to mention, uh, we're trying to apply a business model. In particular, we focus on uh, solid waste management and the Dutchess County Waste to Energy Plan. This is by every uh, evaluation, the, the one area in county government that is in fact a business. We take garbage and we convert it into energy. Yet in this particular case, this business is losing money. And it's costing Dutchess County taxpayers, well, nearly $4 million this year, $6 million uh, a year ago. This is not an issue that we can uh, ignore any longer, so we're confronting it. Uh, Dutchess County, instead of the public resource recovery agency, is now the planning unit for solid waste management. Why? Because we're the ones who set policy. Because Ben Trout and Joel Tyner and the other county legislators are accountable to the public. Public authority is accountable to the public authority. We want Dutchess County to establish solid waste policy and recycling policy so that we can govern our own and, and define our own future. We did that earlier this year. By driving this process and having Dutchess County government and now the uh, director of solid waste management uh, managing this process, 
Dutchess County this year, thanks to our efforts, will save $2 million in the net service fee that you have been paying. And then over the course of the next several months, we will evaluate a new management model. Our goal is to create a business model that makes money, which ultimately means a stronger partnership with the private sector. And we believe that uh, we will zero out that net service fee next year and over the course of the next few years begin to make money for Dutchess County taxpayers because we think uh, that we ought to. No longer should this be a drain on us. So $2 million savings because of this. Now you may have heard that the Dutchess County Jail is overcrowded. It's not really overcrowded. In fact, as I've joked with a number, I shouldn't, I shouldn't say joked, as I said to a number of people who have said to me, we don't need more jail cells. I said if I had, <clears throat> if I had all of the inmates that Dutchess County is responsible for that are currently in other county jail facilities across New York State, if I had them on the current jail uh, campus with tents over them, you'd be asking me to build a new jail. I mean, it is, it is immoral the way in which we have dealt with this issue. Because ultimately, we are paying other counties to house out Dutchess County's inmates. They are severed from their represent the legal representation. And more importantly, 98% of those individuals who are incarcerated in Dutchess County end up back in our community, 98%. When they're in Chemung County or Rensselaer or some other place, they're not receiving the alternatives for incarceration services that we provide to drive down recidivism so that ultimately individuals don't find their way back into the, into the criminal justice system. And ironically, that's what's driving the cost. People who continue to return into the criminal justice system back into jail. So ultimately, this is a bad business model, and I think we have a moral obligation uh, to address it. The housing out of inmates is not a policy. It's the avoidance of a policy. The net cost to Dutchess County for the jail is $35 million. 26.5 of that is staffing. I believe we've, we've, met the, met, we've met and hit the tipping point. Now the 2013 tentative budget initiates a solution if the legislature wishes to embrace it and the community allow us to move forward. What we do is on site, we, first we say to the uh, New York State who governs jail policy in the state of New York, the Department of Corrections, Cor uh, Commission on Corrections, that we want to initiate a solution. And in so doing, they'll allow us to put temporary pods, sort of a, uh, a manufactured home for, for, jail, uh, for jails, on site, on the current location. That will enable us to bring inmates back to Dutchess County, and this budget uh, begins that uh, assumption, saving Dutchess County taxpayers about $2 million. Now, the long-term solution is new facility. It is a new facility. And ultimately, if we were to move forward with a new, a new structure, we can do so uh, at, a, at a cost less than we're currently paying to house out, and we can drive down staffing ratios. Why is that important? Dutchess County's jail today for the inmates who are in our facility. Now keep in mind, we have more people housed out in other jail facilities than we have in our current jail facility, and we are spending more money to house them out than it would cost us to pay for the construction of a new jail. We are building other counties' jails, and they're very thankful. In fact, I know we're on the right track because I've been getting calls from county executives who say, don't take our money away. It's not your money. It's not just county taxpayers' money. We'd like to use it to invest in a solution. Staff ratio. For every four inmates in the Dutchess County Jail facility, we have three corrections officers. The 21st century, mo 21st century model for corrections, at least at the county level, is for every four inmates you have one correction officer. Over the course of a decade, we can save a half a billion dollars, a half a billion dollars in staffing costs if we initiate a solution. The avoidance of this problem will only compound it and cost Dutchess County taxpayers a bundle. Not to mention we are outsourcing the care of these particular individuals. That means if someone else, some other county causes a problem or has an issue, it's our risk, it's our liability. I'm not willing to assume that any longer, and I think avoiding it and pretending as if it doesn't exist isn't necessarily solving the problem. This budget initiates the $2 million savings. Additionally, we're focused on mental hygiene and the delivery of mental, mental health services. Why? Well, there's a need for a new model. Uh, the Hudson River uh, Psych Center closure, the change in national health care, uh, uh, health insurance, uh, uh, full, or full health models, if you will, physical and mental health, all have changed national and social understanding of mental health services, yet our particular mental health delivery is among the most costly in the state of New York. Now our focus is this, uh, with the closure of Hudson River Psych, the state of New York made available uh, resources uh, to Dutchess County. My predecessor didn't want to take those dollars. I, on the other hand, said, well, let's take them and begin the initiation of a transformation and change in mental health delivery. So our model is no longer on institutionalizing individuals, but rather on diversion, prevention, and intervention. Let's 
where we can, through the smaller investment, make the larger uh, impact, let's do that. The core and the center of our diversion plan is a mobile crisis intervention team to partner with their helpline, very effective, all in an effort to try to be more effective in the delivery of mental health services. By securing those dollars, Dutchess County uh, was able uh, to, uh, to uh, achieve and, and receive $1.5 million in assistance from the state of New York. I thank Senator Sland uh, for his assistance. We were able to pull that off. That's an investment. Additionally, our goal is to break down the barriers between physical health and mental health. This budget represents, through again, year one of a multi-year change in the way in which mental health services are delivered, $1.1 million in net savings to Dutchess County. Now, as important to government as, uh, is, uh, as, excuse me, as important as government is to government, uh, that which funds us, of course, is all of you, the private sector. And Dutchess County's economic development uh, model was built uh, in the aftermath of IBM's, IBM's downsizing some 25 years ago. That model is no longer sufficient. Uh, we need to be more agile, uh, we need to, meet, need to be more aggressive and more effective, which is why we began to internalize some of our economic development efforts. I know you, some of you met uh, the Deputy Commissioner of Economic Development and Strategic Planning, Ron Hicks. Our goal, get county government out of the way. We don't want to be an obstacle to sustainable quality economic development. We want to be your partner. And the goal for us is to make all of the assets of county government uh, work uh, together. Uh, to achieve economic benefit. And we've seen that already with the creation of our economic development cabinet uh, and a number of uh, initiatives. The For Our Future plan, which uh, focuses on uh, the recruitment, the reinvestment, uh, the recruitment of new businesses, the, the investment uh, and help of existing businesses. Uh, again, our focus is not only to identify new job creators from outside to bring them in, but to work with all of you. 80% of job growth comes from existing businesses. We ought to make sure that we're partnering with you, partnering with your municipalities to bring about economic growth. Now, some of the projects uh, that we've been focused on include the Culinary Institute of America and some others in Eastern Dutchess, um, uh, bringing over 2,200 construction jobs to Dutchess County, over 500 permanent jobs to Dutchess County. Doesn't stem the tide, uh, but for us, it begins this effort uh, to bring about uh, economic growth. Now, <clears throat> of importance to Northern Dutchess County, not only the Culinary Institute and the sort of bricks and mortar investment, but also our focus on tourism uh, and the arts. Uh, this particular budget preserves funding uh, for uh, the Dutchess County Arts Council uh, and the Bardavon, but it does it through uh, the aid of the Industrial Development Agency, the IDA. Additionally, uh, the IDA uh, at our request has provided funding for a, a tourism and arts promotion campaign above what was the, f uh, the base investment uh, into tourism. Why? Because we think that through promoting this county more aggressively and doing it in a way uh, that uh, helps us not only promote tourism but business development, we think we can uh, bring about not only uh, benefit to the taxpayer through uh, business growth but also through new revenues uh, to Dutchess County. This is a $400,000 cost avoidance uh, to county government. We're almost there. $40 million budget gap, little by little pieced our way over it. What else did we do? Uh, well, as you probably know, we began uh, this year by meeting, or this budget process, by meeting with the uh, supervisors and mayors uh, in Dutchess County. Uh, there are some final pieces that we needed to put together. And we said to them, listen, Dutchess County charges a sales tax. It is a countywide sales tax. The resources and revenues for, uh, are, are primarily for Dutchess County, and then we distribute about $30 million of that sales tax to the towns, villages, and cities of Dutchess County. We do so because of a contractual arrangement that ceased effectiveness in 2005, but we've pretended as if it still exists, uh, we distribute those dollars. This year, this budget caps what we distribute to municipalities instead of $30 million, at $25 million. For us, uh, that not only helps us preserve shared services like our planners and engineers who help with the development of master plans, sidewalk plans, open space preservation plans, farmland protection plans, uh, land use policy, what have you, and engineering services that we provide to municipalities that they would have to pay others uh, for, provides great savings for them, those are discretionary and the state of New York says you don't have to pay for those. So if we weren't able to preserve those things, we'd have to cut them. Uh, this, uh, pro uh, this proposal enables us to preserve them. Now what we've done is cap distribution to 25 million. Uh, we're using, um, uh, excuse me, we're also uh, taking back the Board of Elections costs that county government has required uh, uh, each town uh, and city to pay for. That's about a $1.4 million savings to the towns and villages. Uh, additionally, we launch uh, a municipal shared services and consolidation grants, first of its kind in the state of New York. A million dollars on the table to consolidate government. Why? 
because we think government needs to change. And the, the chorus of status quoers who say we can't, we won't, it's, it's just too much pressure, it's too much to sacrifice, I don't believe it. I don't believe it because I was a village mayor for 12 years. And every time we could find a better way to deliver a service in partnership with another one of our municipalities, we did it. What we're saying to every town, village, and city in Dutchess County, we'll put a million dollars on the table if you can save the money. Just prove it. Consolidate. If you have a village hall and a town hall across from one another, maybe you can integrate certain services. If you have a highway department in one, one village and a highway department in, in another town and they actually share the same piece of property to, de to, to deliver a service, perhaps you could consolidate some of it. I'm not saying you have to do it our way. Tell us how to cut costs and how you will consolidate government and we put a million dollars on the table to do it. First of its kind in the state because we want to drive change. I believe the only way you can get this to happen is through incentive and pressure. And for us, that's what we're engaged in. That's what we're engaged in. Because ultimately we think you deserve a government that's more efficient and more effective regardless of whose decal is on the side of the truck. We want to drive down costs and ultimately provide a better goal, a better product to the taxpayers. Additionally, we launch our agency partner grant. This is a non-for-profit grant. Traditionally, non-for-profits would lobby the legislature and somebody who knew somebody who knew somebody got a line in the budget. And then each year, the only way you got more money or you were able to change who you wanted to buy the service from was to give the existing agencies more money and add somebody else because nobody ever wanted to cut. Now, I'm not suggesting we cut anything. In fact, this budget preserves the not-for-profit funding level at $700,000, which it's been uh, last year and the year before. The difference, however, is rather than line iting them out, we're creating a competitive grant. Why? Because we want not-for-profits to work together. We want to incentivize coordination and cooperation among not-for-profits to deliver a service. And more importantly, we think a competitive process, whether municipalities or not-for-profit, builds accountability and our ability to measure outcomes. We think when we spend your money, we should know exactly what we're getting. We should have a metric to measure whether or not we've gotten it, and that together we should prove that we've made an impact and that an outcome had been met. That's what uh, the community, uh, the shared services grant is about and the agency partnership grant is about uh, as well. In all cases, our focus is on uh, producing an outcome, and that for us uh, is our priority. Now, you can't overcome a $40 million budget gap uh, without addressing workforce. 1,850 uh, employees, uh, give or take, in Dutchess County. We've worked together with the CSEA. In fact, they just approved uh, their contract. No raises, three years, no raises. Uh, this is ratified by the CSEA, uh, but, but uh, $600,000 concession uh, in dental savings to Dutchess County. I am thankful to the CSEA and to their leadership. Some elected officials think it's um, something to celebrate, like, you know, uh, we're going to fire people. That, that's a good thing. I am not one of those people. I think that the men and women who work for Dutchess County government sacrifice a lot. I think they do a great, a great amount of work, uh, but we also need to reset expectations, get ourselves current, uh, and we all have to sacrifice a little bit. So the CSEA came to the table with a $600,000 savings in dental. Additionally, we worked with them uh, to uh, unveil and launch our workforce adjustment incentive. 72 employees took that adjustment uh, incentive. Additionally, nearly 57 corresponding positions were deleted in this budget uh, to provide 2013 program savings of $4.3 million in workforce reduction savings uh, in Dutchess County government. Over the next five years, $24 million uh, in workforce uh, savings. Now, uh, sadly, uh, we currently have seven layoffs in this budget. A 103 full-time employee reduction so we're going from 1850 down to 1747. I do my math right. Uh, uh, in workforce numbers, seven of those uh, are layoffs. We're working with those individuals to see if we can slot them uh, within uh, uh, vacant positions that exist in county government. Sadly, uh, though, there are layoffs. But in the grand scheme of things, we are uh, we are uh, at least uh, we were able to minimize uh, the total number of layoffs. Uh, in this uh, county budget. So again, the total workforce reduction, 1 103 positions, saving in 2013 $6.8 million, and over the next five years, $38 million in tax money. Now, why is that important? This is the process of right-sizing county government, and over the next three years, we will reduce our workforce. We, we expect by as many as another 100 full-time employees through attrition and other consolidation efforts that we're going to continue to launch and, and initiate over the next couple of years. Now, lastly, uh, what we work with uh, in, uh, uh, we work with our municipalities uh, to provide uh, federal resources to them so that they can uh, invest uh, in uh, infrastructure projects. This budget uh, uh, includes the administration of the Community Development Block Grant Program, Rhinebeck, Red Hook, Tivoli, 
the village of Rhinebeck, town of Hyde Park, all benefited millions of dollars in federal money that we're able to direct to infrastructure projects. For the first time, we've consolidated administration. The city of Poughkeepsie had its own program. Dutchess County had a program. Administrative uh, in 2013 now by Dutchess County government alone. We'll be managing it. And for the first time in the program history, every town, village, and city in Dutchess County is now a member of the CDBG program. Why is that important? Larger population means we can access more federal dollars. <clears throat> so again, uh, with CDBG, we focus on consolidation, we focus on community investment, all in an effort to enhance the economy. Now, the last components of this budget, fund balance. Uh, we apply $7.4 million of, the Dutchess, of Dutchess County's collective uh, fund balance. As you probably know, the budget that, that I uh, came into office with uh, was adopted by the legislature and the executive last year, appropriated about $25 million of our fund balance, leaving us virtually no fund balance. Why is that important? You need the reserve for cash flow. You need the reserve for unexpected uh, expenditures. You also need the reserve in order to prove financial stability. So if we borrow money, our rates are lower. No fund balance costs the taxpayers more. Uh, the expectation of the state of New York is that you have a 5 to 10 percent fund balance. We began with virtually zero. Uh, this budget uh, replenishes it to a degree. We will end, we, we believe, with a 3.2 percent fund balance, the slow return uh, to fiscal stability. Additionally, it reinstates uh, the mortgage recording tax. This is a one-time recording fee of one-half of one percent. Uh, this budget assumes a July 1st effective date. Uh, with, uh, we've made our request to the state of New York, uh, which would have to initiate both this our current sales tax and our current hotel motel tax represents about $40 million in total revenue to Dutchess County, mortgage, hotel, and sales tax. Every two years, the legislature in Albany has to approve these. Our request to Albany in the case of the mortgage recording tax uh, is to include a first-time homebuyer's exemption, and we, we expect uh, the mortgage recording tax will be subject to a four-year sun sunset uh, uh, um, uh, I get it. <laughs> provision. Uh, so that uh, every uh, four years the legislature would have to reconsider. Uh, if we are able to have the mortgage recording tax implemented by April the 1st, uh, we propose sharing 20% of the revenue uh, that we would receive with the towns, villages, and cities of Dutchess County. But rather than based on population, which is the way the sales tax is distributed, having nothing to do with anything logical, uh, we want uh, and propose that if we were to see this revenue uh, by April 1st, 20% of it would be distributed based on assessed valuation. You grow your piece of the pie or piece of the puzzle, you get a little bit more uh, of the revenue. All, in, again, incentivize economic uh, uh, growth. Uh, that uh, mortgage recording tax represents $4.8 in new revenue. Now, as you know, uh, because I voted for it, there's a 2% uh, property tax cap uh, established by the state of New York. Uh, when we began the process of developing this budget, without the mortgage recording tax as an option and without fund balance to tap, we were looking at as much as a double-digit property tax increase. We know that that is not something that anyone could accept. We also knew as we started to get closer and closer to, uh, to finalizing this budget that the legislature didn't, nor did I, want to see any property tax increase. So the goal was how do we minimize that property tax increase uh, by stabilizing, by also stabilizing Dutchess County uh, finances. So <clears throat> the property tax cap uh, is state imposed. This budget stays under the cap. Let me explain it for one second. Uh, there are certain exemptions the state built in. Uh, so the actual 2% property tax cap for Dutchess County is 2.3%. That's the way in which uh, the state does the calculation. This budget produces uh, a property tax levy increase of 2% under the tax cap, uh, which means for the average uh, uh, valued home in Dutchess County, uh, a $10.81 increase in Dutchess County tax uh, property taxes. No amount of money, as far as we're concerned, or increase in taxation is acceptable, but overcoming a $40 million budget gap while eliminating 103 positions, consolidating county government, making those cost reductions, there was limited way to get there without a minor increase in property taxes. So for us, staying under the cap was a, was a focus. This budget uh, accomplishes that. Now, in December of last year, I asked the residents of Dutchess County uh, to help me answer two important questions. Who are we as a people, and how do we hope to live? Now, budget doesn't necessarily answer those questions in its entirety, but it is my impression and, and, and my expectation and my belief that government cannot live with the status quo any longer and that there is no better time to challenge, to confront the challenges of our day. This is, for us, our moment to transform the way in which government functions. And for us, our mission is as clear as it is compelling. By learning from the past, building on our successes, staring down the challenges of our day, and committing to a multi-year approach, we can climb out from under the routine and break our business as usual mentality and end, at long last, the status quo that too often impedes reorganization, consolidation, and transformation. This budget 
initiates that transformation. I am thankful to the county legislature for their investment. I'm thankful for the town supervisors and village mayors who, and city mayors who understand that we're all in this together. And more importantly, I'm thankful to each and every one of you, not only for your time today, uh, but for your investment, your commitment, and your involvement in making Dutchess County a great place to live, work, and raise a family. And with that, I'd be more than happy to answer a few questions. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> Questions? Jeff Ackerley. Mark, are you putting any pressure on the municipalities to look at consolidation? It's been talked about forever, but because of self-interest, I don't think we're getting very far with that effort. Are you putting any pressure from the county? And did you miss that part of the presentation? You know, I I Jeff, you listen, you just want to know more? Real pressure. Uh, well, the loss, uh, the, the municipalities feel that the capping of sales tax is pressure, which it is. It's the reduction of sales tax distribution of 15%. So while we preserve 85% of what we give towns, villages, and cities, 15% of that's coming back to Dutchess County and will be redistributed through this competitive grant. So just the loss of that revenue has created a stir. In fact, the town of Rhinebeck uh, town board voted uh, to tell me they didn't like this proposal. Now, I, all I would tell you is in August, I had the courtesy of having uh, multiple conversations with the town supervisors and village mayors, and every decision along the way that impacted them, we included them. I didn't receive a phone call from a town council person telling me uh, that they had a particular concern. But more importantly, and I don't mean that as, uh, as to sound snide at all, or uh, to be a jab, I think that when you confront problems in a democracy, you include people regardless of party, regardless of level, and you say, let's try to confront the challenge together. For us, what I would say to you is uh, that in itself is pressure, and then the grant initiative is incentive. Beyond that, here's my message. Dutchess County will not spend its resources unless we know what the outcome is and we're, we agree together uh, to a particular goal. We invest hundreds of millions of dollars annually to create comprehensive planning, land use policy countywide, economic development, proposals. We have uh, worked together to create a certain level of expectation and outcome. If we're going to give municipality to an, uh, money to a not-for-profit or to a municipality, or we're going to give assistance to a municipality or not-for-profit, you have to be a part of the team. Why would we spend Dutchess County tax dollars uh, on or, or with uh, or for an initiative that contradicts some county-wide expectation? So for us, it's not just the money, it's also the level of expectation. And that's why we're clearly saying we want to, to drive down the total cost of government. We're going to do it. One uh, decision, one dollar, one policy initiative at a time. So I, there are a number of supervisors and mayors who think that that's pressure enough. And I'll tell you, Jeff, uh, I'm willing to start there. This is the first in the state of New York. Uh, and we're doing it because we think that ultimately it will provide a better product to all of you. And where a town, village, or city can provide a service better than we can, we'll, we'll pay for it. We just won't buy a service from a town, village, or city that we don't need. Uh, so for us, that's the goal. Uh, additionally, uh, in 2004, excuse me, 2013, uh, we're uh, initiating uh, a workers' compensation consortium pool uh, so that towns, villages, and cities could buy into the county's workers' comp instead of their own. City of Beacon is in our pilot, saved 40% this year in workers' compensation costs. We think that's what county government ought to be. Let's be the back office. Health insurance, uh, Sue Crane, the supervisor of Red Oak, has made this a priority. We're, uh, we're in 13, we're evaluating uh, a health insurance consortium. Uh, we expect that uh, we will be able to open uh, Dutchess County's health insurance, self-insured health insurance, should we go that route, uh, to municipalities so they can buy their insurance for maybe as much as a 20 to 30 percent reduction in health insurance. Uh, and uh, among many other things, Dutchess County has a number of law enforcement divisions. I don't know if you know this, we in fact have among the the highest number of police departments of any county in the state. Uh, we're not suggesting that you consolidate into a county police force, that's not our focus, but in 2013 we're going to convene uh, a law enforcement uh, working group with a and summit with all of the municipal law enforcement agencies to identify where we have overlaps, where we have gaps, and how we can redeploy uh, law enforcement to be much more efficient and cost effective for every taxpayer. So I think those are, are, are major steps uh, to address what you're, what you're asking about. Other questions? Yes. Hi, Mark. Susan Ellis. I know you. Um, I would like to ask, not having seen anything on the environmental side here, it usually falls under contractual or nonprofit agencies. Mm -hmm. um, I know cooperative Commission and environmental management council are concerned about 
how they're going to manage with what's happening. So I would yeah. ask you to address what you well, well, first, um, the solid waste component is a major step in the area of environmental uh, consideration at the county level. By internalizing uh, our solid waste management, our focus will be on recycling. Why? Uh, not only because of the environmental benefit, but it is a third of the cost uh, to eliminate recycling waste as it is to eliminate solid waste. So the higher, uh, the higher the recycling rate, the lower the cost to Dutchess County taxpayers and ultimately provide an environmental and economic uh, benefit. Uh, that said, uh, to the issue of uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension, this budget preserves uh, for the first quarter of the new year, every, remember those not-for-profits I said were line-itemed in the budget? Uh, this budget preserves 25% of that funding. So for the first quarter of the new year, all, everyone, every not-for-profit that received its funding through that line-item approach is preserved for one quarter. On or by April 1st, we launch, well, not we launch, we will, we will be able to contract uh, for service. So right now, if you're a not-for-profit agency, you should go to duchessny.gov and the Department of Planning and Development. You should print out your application and you should apply for funding. We've moved the process forward because ultimately, uh, if the legislature initiates and approves our proposal, we want obviously not to have any time uh, fall, uh, be, uh, have us fall behind in, in, in ensuring the dollars are available to not-for-profits. Now, in the case of Cornell and everybody else, if you provide a service that Dutchess County needs to buy, we'll continue to buy it. But we want to ultimately have two things, not-for-profits working together uh, so that we're not functioning in silos. And I've heard this from not-for-profits. I love it. I say to the Coalition for Not-for-Profits who says, we want to work together. We want you to work together with us. We want you to consolidate and have us all working together. And then at the end of the meeting, I get a not-for-profit say, yeah, but we want our money. I I'm fine with that. I understand that. But we're going to initiate the coordination of service delivery with, not with our not-for-profits. So we want that to happen. And we want, through a competitive process, to be able to show accountability uh, through transparency and depoliticize the decision making. I don't, I, I know Tom Mansfield is here and Ben Trout's here. They're both Red Hook uh, County legislators, Tom prior to Ben. The process to get money for a not-for-profit, if you don't go through the RFP, is who do you know and how many people can you stuff in a public hearing? Not to mention, if you've upset a member of the legislature and they have a particular power base, you're not getting anything. That's not fair, and it's not accountable, and it's not transparent. So uh, I, I think the Cornell Cooperative Extension provides an important service. I think that they will compete beautifully. Uh, and from my perspective, having represented Northern and Eastern Duchess for the number of years I have, I can tell you that we want to, and one of the funding categories is in the area of environmental sustainability, we want to promote agriculture uh, and, uh, uh, and farming in Dutchess County, and we'll continue to do so. Apply get some letters of support, go through a, a process. The, the advisory panel, I'll get you, Chris, the advisory panel that will make these decisions includes municipal leaders, legislative representation, and two representatives from the not-for-profit community. You had a question. Yes. Hi, Mark. Um, Joe Whitman uh, of Red Hook. Yeah. And thank you for a very comprehensive uh, and thorough presentation. I try. I that. Could I make it more entertaining, though? Is it, was it a little boring? Uh, you did a good job. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, on communication, you mentioned at the beginning yeah. that that is a major focus the county executive office. So tell us a little bit about how you plan to do that. Yeah. I do remember getting the surveys, and I'm just interested in knowing the response rate. Uh, uh, well, first it was an online survey, but we're going to use it. We've said to people that um, we're going to use this tool more often. So the first round was what helped us with the budget, because we had to overcome the $40 million uh, budget gap. So this uh, survey had 20, over 2,200 responses online. Very For us, uh, the results are online, so you can see where the you know, who responded, age categories, where they were from. Uh, clearly, a uh, younger population, uh, I would say middle to high, middle to mid-high income. I mean, I don't want to say, I mean, it, it definitely was, uh, we did get a good balance of low income as well, I think. An older population. Well, I guess we did better with all, take a look at the results. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we're going to continue to use that tool. Additionally, we relaunched uh, the Dutchess County uh, website, so duchessny.gov is entirely uh, has been redeveloped and our OCIS staff has done wonderfully to make it more user-friendly. Uh, this year we launched uh, Duchess Delivery, which is an, uh, an online communication tool, kind of like Constant Contact for Government. Uh, so you can sign up for that to get direct information. You can choose what information you want, when you want it, how you want it delivered to you. We also have provided that service to the towns, villages, and cities. So to those who say, how are we going to work together, we've said to the towns, villages, and cities, listen, buy into Duchess Delivery because if we, if we can coordinate how we get messaging and information out to the taxpayer, you'll get it in an easier fashion. We'll be able to share information, and you won't get one from the village, one from the town, one from the county. It'll be coordinated. They have control over what goes out 
So encourage your municipalities to get on board. I think only the village of Red Hook is now on board with Duchess Delivery. We also launched Duchess Dashboard. What's that? It's kind of like your investment tool. Uh, there are certain economic and budget indicators that we use to make decisions. And we, in real time, wanted to provide that information to you. So you can go to the website and see those indicators that we use to make decisions so that you can track them with us. The goal, transparency. And then additionally, within county, the county executive's office, we had a communications director. The communications director was actually a budget analyst. <laughs> so for legitimacy, transparency, and honesty, we eliminated that position and actually created the position of communications director for Dutchess County Government. Now, we have one person, um, but instead of having that uh, not, uh, you know, ha having that be less transparent, uh, we focused on that. And the goal, again, communication. And then lastly, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I, and I don't mean that uh, in, a, in, a, in a sarcastic way. We want to be out in the community. Ron Hicks was with the Chamber, uh, Red Hook Chamber uh, last time. We've said to department heads, we want you out in the community talking to your constituency uh, your, and your constituent groups. And if you thought this was entertaining, I'll come back to any group. If there are three people or more gathered anywhere, I'm happy to talk to them. <laughs> but again, let's engage in the conversation. We have um, uh, a polling Chamber of Commerce presentation like this. Uh, we're doing a town hall meeting, I hope, in Northeast Dutchess and a town hall meeting in Southern Dutchess. And, and we're, we're trying to keep information flowing. Yes, Chris Kane. Um, so did you, I just want to clarify. Did you say that the sales tax distribution would be based on population? Uh, the sales tax distribution is by, uh, by contract currently distributed by population. The mortgage recording tax revenue, should we achieve it by April 1st this year or full year next year, we would distribute based on assessed valuation each town individually. Which means, by the way, that there are a number of municipalities that actually do better. Uh, so despite capping the sales tax, when you take the sales tax cap and you add then the revenue generated distributed by assessed valuation of the mortgage recording tax, there are m multiple municipalities that actually receive more revenue. Uh, and it enables us annually to change the distribution so that it's uh, reflective of assessed valuation growth. 85% remains uh, at, at uh, population, and, and I'm sorry to do this, and I promise that I will do it very quickly, but the, the sales tax distribution formula was created in the 1980s. The cities of Beacon and Poughkeepsie have preemptive right to a 1.5% sales tax. In 1982, the Dutchess County government said, we need a little bit more revenue, so can we have a sales tax? Uh, in order for Dutchess County to have a sales tax in the two cities where, in fact, the sales tax was generated, those cities had to... Uh, give up their preemptive rights, so they did. We created a Dutchess County sales tax and said, because state law says if you give it up, you get to have some of it, we created a contract with the City of Beacon and City of Poughkeepsie. That's the contract, by law. We don't, we don't have to distribute anything to anybody, but the contract says get, you have to, the law says you have to create a contract with Beacon and Poughkeepsie. We did so. The City of Be Poughkeepsie, however, was able to achieve a percentage of that revenue that accelerates annually. So that despite the fact that Rhinebeck developed Poughkeepsie developed. I don't know if you noticed, there's some shopping malls since the 1980s in Poughkeepsie. Uh, East Fishkill developed, and the revenue through the sales tax was now being generated outside of the city of Poughkeepsie. Uh, the, the structure benefited disproportionately this, the city of Poughkeepsie. So since 1982, they've been receiving a disproportionate amount of that revenue, which is fine. I mean, listen, that's a, that's a policy initiative and decision that gets made openly, and if that's the conclusion, that's fine. But by law, we distribute it uh, based on population to the two cities and to the, uh, to the towns and villages of Dutchess County. Okay. So, well, my question is because, you know, we've, we've all, all the communities in Dutchess now, I believe, have signed on to the county plan, master plan directions. Yes. Which indicates, you know, where development should go and how growth should happen. And many areas of the county, particularly up here in northern Dutchess, are working hard to protect a lot of our natural resources and agricultural waste, so our assessed <coughs> values are never really going to catch up. Well, that can't be true, Chris, because I, I was told from the number of years that I worked at the Red Hook, uh, in Red Hook's open space and farmland protection plan that the preservation of farmland and open space actually maintains and in some ways enhances assessed valuation. At least that was the argument that was made. It so, maintains and enhances doesn't necessarily mean it's going to grow as fast as oh, well, that's true. the areas of the county where yeah. the, the growth is directed to go because of infrastructure and other You're right. Needs. So I was wondering if you, you know, how do you evaluate the decision to do it on assessed value versus population? Well, our, our, the thought was with the mortgage recording tax, uh, assessed valuation is 
is legitimate. It may not be the best distribution model, but it's legitimate. The million dollar competitive grant that we're putting together uh, will be based on initiative. And now the communities that, I will say this, the communities that have seen slower rates of growth actually are the ones that have some of the best consolidation ideas. So I would think that they would compete better. Now additionally, uh, we have this contract. Remember I mentioned the, the two, this contract with the two cities ceased effectiveness in 2005. So technically we don't have a sales tax distribution model. We have one that we've honored since 2005. What I've said to the towns, villages, and cities is in 2013, get around the table and come up with a new model that makes sense. And if you can, as a unit, multiple municipalities come up with a new agreement, I'll sign it. But I'm not going to dictate to you how that should happen, and I'm not going to stand on the sideline and pretend as if we don't have an issue to address. And that's what some of our towns want us to do. Just keep giving us the money because you've always given us the money and don't confront it. No, I, I want us as a unit of, uh, and as a community uh, to address that. So you, you could argue that a new model for distribution of sales tax could and should take into consideration both uh, economic growth and environmental preservation or, or land use, or excuse me, farmland preservation. And I would say to those municipalities, I'm, I'm game for it. I, I argued this when I was president of the Northern Duchess uh, Alliance. If you see economic growth in the southern end, that doesn't mean that the northern end of Dutchess County shouldn't benefit from that economically or financially because it chooses to preserve its open space. I'm open to that kind of formula. But I, I say this sincerely, but I also, I, I also mean it. We, as a community, can't talk out of one side of our mouths or talk one thing and do something else. If, in fact, the towns, villages, and cities wish to have a better model for the sharing of resources, I want us to reach that conclusion. And I think we can do that. So I think that your concern could be addressed uh, in this distribution model, and I'd strongly encourage the towns that have that and can make that argument to be at the table to make that argument because there's some benefit there. One, oh, let me, if you haven't already, I'm going to do, if we can do two or three rapid questions. Let's make this the firing line. Go. I just wanted to clarify that when you said the well, <coughs> end of July 1, you're looking to... Um, reinstate, reinstate the mortgage recording tax. Well, you're going to waive it for first-time homebuyers? The proposal that we're sending to the state legislature for their approval is to include a, a first-time homebuyers exemption. Now, I will tell you... Uh, that the victor of the Steve Salan Terry Gibson race will have to decide if they're going to include it, although I've had conversations with both now. Uh, and then the assembly delegation, uh, in this case Kevin Cahill and, and Dee Dee Barrett in the northern end of, of Dutchess County, uh, would have to carry the legislation. We're strongly encouraging them to do so because we ultimately think that uh, the revenue structure that we've created not only um, shares the sacrifice, if you will, uh, but, but sets the county up for a multi-year uh, structural uh, uh, stability. Greg, go ahead. You can be quick. Uh, I was going to make a comment, not oh. ask a question. So if people have questions, Tom? it's probably more important. What's the estimated capital cost for the uh, proposed jail? Well, there are, there are three models, I think, in the uh, criminal justice. I asked the criminal justice council as an interdisciplinary team to review the problem and give us solutions. There are three. The estimate, uh, there's one that's about $125 million, I think. Uh, and if you put it out for 20 years of bond, you're talking about $7 million mm -hmm. in bond cost, uh, which is less than what we currently pay to uh, institutions outside of Dutchess County. That's the one that I think uh, seems to have the most support. I, I will tell you the process was create the report, take public comment, get it to the legislature and the executive for our consideration and review, and that's what we're going to do. Now, we're also bringing in a third-party uh, consultant to evaluate that review because we didn't want to say, you know, we, we have a government entity that gave us the report we wanted. We have a government entity that we believe gave us a good report. We want an independent review to validate whether or not it's accurate. When that's done, we'll then initiate a proposal. Uh, but we expect that a construction project, if done, uh, a construction project could, could and would stay below what we currently pay to house, house inmates out. Cover it? Good. Yes? I'd like to know where the pods that you described will be located physically, and if you're going to have fewer COs um, taking care of the population, how are they going to be very secure for the communities around them? Well, uh, first of all, the model that, that, that is now used nationally, uh, I mean, think of it sort of as a, a dormitory style where you have, uh, you know, a corrections or several corrections officers in the center of a unit and around them uh, are then individual cells with a joint, to, so let's say, uh, um, you know, recreational area in the middle. I, I want to be careful because it's not recreational. I mean, it's fairly 
you know, it's a corrections institution. It's not a, not a playground. So uh, that kind of structure is safe. I mean, it's, it's managed all across the country, and, and it works. We have one of them on site already. We have that kind of a model. But it was built after, on top of the original uh, structure. The original structure is, you know, the old-fashioned jail cells. It's a hallway with jail cells. And you have to have corrections officers walking back and forth, up and down, all day long. If you have somebody who's on 24-hour surveillance, you have to have in the current jail and a corrections officer sit across from a jail cell for 24 hours. I mean, the new model says you can, you can have video surveillance, you can have an individual in, a, in that, several of them in, in one, one area where maybe one correction officer can monitor three or four. So th there are those kinds of, of savings. Now, as far as where the pods would be located, they'd be temporar temporarily put on site on, I want to make sure I got my, my uh, directional. Uh, on the south end of the current facility, which is already in the, the campus. Right now, it's, it's for extra parking. Uh, we'll enter into a lease agreement with a property owner adjacent to the south end of the land, uh, enabling us on the north end to put, I did that opposite. On the north end will be the parking lot, and the south end will be the pods, uh, assuming the legislature embraces it. Um, but as far as safety, it, I, I, we have one of those on site. Uh, and overall, uh, there, there is no, uh, no analysis of any kind uh, that should should strike any amount of fear. This is a this is a structural uh, uh, proposal that uh, that multiple counties and communities and states use all across the country. It, and it's 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 humane. It's more uh, it's more effective, uh, and uh, it does help to again keeping in mind uh, that these inmates will find their way back into Dutchess County. We're not a, we're not the place of last resort. You don't come to us for 12 years of incarceration. You go to a state facility or a federal facility. You're with Dutchess County for less than 12 months, and then you re-enter the community. So we want to create the model that helps us to drive down recidivism. Otherwise, we'll continue to build jails just for the purposes of building jails, and that's not, not our focus. You want to say something nice? <laughs> that's not like me, but I will. <laughs> Let's close with Greg Raykow. Two, two brief things, Mark. One, uh, thanks. thanks for what you're trying to do. I think there is a hopefully a rising tide of leaders like you, <clears throat> Governor Cuomo, Christy, who are trying to convince the people that you can't continue to trade your resources and government for their favors and their support. And you're taking the, the, the tougher path. And I, I hope you stay the course and are successful. Another interesting comment, listening to you, the Health Care Reform Act, which I'm sure a lot of the people who are maybe chafing at your plan would support, is very similar in some ways to exactly what you're proposing. The Health Care Reform Act is going to reduce significantly across the board uh, government funding for health care. It will be held back and given to them based on their efficiencies, their patient satisfaction, and their outcomes. So only the stronger institutions will get the funding back. And it sounds to me like that's what you're trying to do, is say, show me your efficiencies and a good plan, and we'll fund it. Well, that's the goal. Measure, you. measure the outcome. Thank you, Greg. Do you really feel compelled that you have to ask one more? So do it right now. 486-2000 is my office. And it, it pains me to hear others and for myself to buy gas in Ulster County. Yeah. So why are we pay more? Why do we pay more? Let's end with this important question. This is a public service announcement on my part. Why, why, is, Dutchess, can, why is Dutchess County's uh, uh, gasoline slightly more costly than Ulster uh, and Columbia County? Uh, air, air pollution. Now, I know that that sounds a little bit odd. We are in what's called by the United States Environmental Protection Agency order, Dutchess County, Putnam and Westchester, are in what's called a non-attainment area. What does that mean? That means the pollution that's generated by New York City finds its way and hovers over Dutchess. Now, I'm of, of the belief that it probably hovers over Ulster as well, but nevertheless, the Environmental Protection Agency suggests that it hovers over us even more which means uh, that gas provided in Dutchess County for your cars and your trucks needs to include an additive, <clears throat> ethanol, considered a conditioner, a shampoo for your gas, uh, to, uh, to provide for greater uh, air quality. Now, you pay a little bit more at the pump. What that does mean for Dutchess County is we get a little bit more in transportation aid from the federal government. So whether it's buses uh, or highway improvements, we get a little bit more. Now, the question is, do we get enough to compensate for the cost of gasoline? We don't actually think so. In fact, uh, we think that the average consumer is shouldering a, a burden that's not necessarily legitimate. So the Dutchess County Department of Planning uh, and our uh, uh, mass transportation organization 
uh, countywide uh, is has actually asked the EPA, uh, which is doing it, to study and give us sort of a review of where are we really in this area, are there others that are in this area, and if, by the way, we were to get some relief at the pump, how much would that lose? How much would we lose in federal aid, and could that be mitigated? So that I think is actually going to be concluded by 2014. By that time, if you were to see gasoline <laughs> price savings, the cost would probably rise anyway. You wouldn't know the difference. But, uh, but yes. So I joke with uh, my friends in Columbia County, who I, I represented for a number of years in the assembly, and Mike Hine, the executive Ulster. Just consider it, it, this our. Uh, you know, tourism enhancement plan for you. You, you. you get a little bit. I mean, we get all the other great assets, the walkway, the trail trail, the, we have a stadium. I mean, Duchess is just so wonderful. They should have, a, you know, a couple cents off on gas to get you to go over there, no? <laughs> no, I, it, but it's, it's a longstanding question, and it's uh, one that has uh, a federal answer. And that's almost Greg Rakehouse's point, you know? <laughs> Believe me, uh, if, if there's a question, the federal government has three answers and four divisions of government to help you answer them. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate your time. I'm sorry I went a little bit over, but I thank you for your commitment to Dutchess County, and thanks for allowing me to speak with you today.